York City is concrete a jungle. The Empire State Building. Chrysler Building. New York City. How long can a building survive? New York is a city famous for its relentless evolution, but it's not a place that's particularly sentimental about its legacy when something shiny and new comes around. The economic engine that made Manhattan one of the densest skyscraper forests in the world is the same one that's brutally destroyed many of its historic gems. An ingenious iron ball weighing 3,000 pounds. Penn Station, Pennsylvania Station. <laughs> Don't you realize a big city like this changes all the time? Oh, I wanted to see the Hippodrome. Protected status can offer some protection for buildings, but that doesn't make it a done deal. While that may be a matter of survival, what does it take for a historic tower to really thrive? In a city where multi-billion dollar skyscrapers set the tone of the debate, what can older towers still offer other than heritage? The Woolworth Building may be one of this city's most iconic skyscrapers, but its checkered history has not always lived up to its grand appearance. Built at the start of the skyscraper boom in a style that quickly went out of fashion and with a huge maintenance bill, the story of its survival tells us a lot about how a building lives in the Big Apple. In 1910, the retail tycoon Frank Winfield Woolworth commissioned a modest new headquarters for his company, declaring that he had no desire to erect a monument that would cause posterity to remember me. That quickly went out the window when later that year he approved plans for a skyscraper that would be the tallest building on earth and earned the nickname the Cathedral of Commerce. That's a title which also gives an insight into its design. When the race for the skies began in the United States, it replaced an era where city skylines across Europe, Asia and the US were all dominated by religious buildings. It was with this in mind that architect Cass Gilbert chose a neo-Gothic style for his design, stating that his job was to weave into the pattern of our own civilization the beauty that is our inheritance. Gilbert's design drew heavily on European Gothic ornamentation, with Gothic arches and tall lancet windows. But make no mistake about it, this was a thoroughly modern building. It even had features that wouldn't look out of place on a present-day skyscraper, including a 57th floor observation deck and a basement pool. When it completed in 1912, it stretched 241 meters into the sky, a height that wouldn't be beaten until the completion of the Chrysler Building in 1930. By the 1960s, the tower had started to suffer. New generations of skyscrapers had risen up, and the Woolworth Building had lost its lustre. Architecture had moved on, ornamentation was out, and minimalism was in. Skyscrapers like the Union Carbide Building and World Trade Center showcased a brave new era of the functional aesthetic, with their clean, minimalist forms. The world that the Woolworth Building represented seemed archaic by comparison, and survival was by no means assured. The iconic Singer Building, which was also once the tallest in the world, was demolished in 1969. Ultimately, skyscrapers are as much a product of the economy as they are of architectural trends and fashions. In Cities Skylines 2 from our video sponsor Paradox, you can see what it's like creating buildings and managing the needs of a living, breathing city. As you build your city, you're going to have to cope with the weather. As the seasons change, you could be blanketed in snow or baking in summer heat. Maybe take a lesson from London's walkie-talkie and try not to melt any cars. With new options for different architectural styles, you can base your city on a bustling US metropolis like this, or more like the sleepy European town that's building the epic Fimon Belt Tunnel. With more detailed zoning options, you can have control over every aspect of how your city grows and how you balance the needs and wants of its inhabitants. A sequel of the game just dropped, and there are tons of new features to get stuck into, whether you're an aspiring architect or just fancy running your own city. There's a link below, let us know how you get on in the comments. Now, as we mentioned, one way a building can secure its future in New York is by becoming a registered landmark. The New York City Landmark Preservation Commission was established in 1962 in the wake of the controversial demolition of Penn Station. 
It's since gone on to protect Washington Square Park and Grand Central Terminal. But it's not a get-out-of-jail-free card. In 1970, the Preservation Committee scrapped a plan to award the Woolworth Building landmark status after its owners protested, citing the strict restrictions placed on modifications to the structure. Repair bills were starting to stack up. By 1962, the original terracotta tiles used to clad the building were under constant repair, and cracks had let in rainwater which had begun to rust the steel structure. In 1977, extensive refurbishments were carried out, which included replacing all the exterior windows and retiling the building. To keep the cost down, the building's ornate tiling was nearly lost completely under a short-lived plan to reclad it in concrete. Costs spiralled from 8 million US dollars to 22 million dollars. With over half the cost paid for through tax breaks, the Woolworth Building was finally given city landmark status in 1982. The venerable Woolworth Building had been saved from the wrecking ball, but whether or not it thrived was another matter. Skip forward to the present day, and it's not just the Woolworth Building that has that issue. Since the pandemic, office space of all types is struggling to survive as New York experiences stiff competition from rivals like Miami and as working patterns change. COVID unlocked remote work in a way that you can't really put that rabbit back in the hat, right? That That's done. So what does that look like? Tenants are still signing new leases. They're signing many big leases as well. But if you compare what they've signed to what they had before, that's where it's telling. So they'll sign a 200,000 square foot lease, for example, and you might celebrate that as an office landlord. But then you go look back at what they had before, and that's where the rub is. So multiply that by hundreds of tenants, thousands of tenants, etc. Occupancy rates across the city are still only at 41% of pre-pandemic levels. Even the Union Carbide building, the skyscraper that once signalled the changing of the guard in architectural fashions, has now been knocked down to make way for the new generation of towers. The Woolworth building's elaborate architecture has now come of age, and its owners are using that prestige to reinvent the skyscraper as luxury accommodation, a task that's not as easy as it sounds. Well, it's the Terracotta Titan, right? It, it is one of the most iconic and recognizable buildings in the world. As an actual building, in the sense that utilizing space, it's changed quite dramatically. Its fortunes, time hasn't necessarily been kind to the Woolworth building. In 2012, developer Alchemy Properties began a seven-year project to convert the top 30 floors into 33 apartments and a five-story castle-in-the-sky penthouse. The building's location in Lower Manhattan and its delicate ornamentation meant that building a crane next to it or on the roof was out of the question. To get around this, every element of the refurb had to be small enough to be transported in one of the building's lift shafts. That special approach once again caused costs to spiral. The initial budget for the refurb was 150 million US dollars, including the sale of the building. The final price is not known, but the bill is reportedly as high as 220 million dollars. So, will it all pay off? Despite the opulent surrounding of the luxury apartments and the rise in demand of super-premium residential properties in Manhattan, sales of the units have been slow. As of 2021, only 22 of the 33 apartments were sold, and earlier this year the penthouse finally shifted after six years on the market and for only 30 million US dollars, a fraction of the 110 million dollar asking price. What looks incredible from the outside, and you could argue that the Woolworth building is one of the prettiest buildings in the world, doesn't necessarily translate into the kind of prices that a hedge fund manager or a private equity titan or a tech executive would want to pay. The romanticism of the building doesn't necessarily translate into price per square foot. So what does that mean for the iconic Woolworth building? Is this the beginning of a new era or just another full start? Only time can tell, but if there's anything this storied building can reveal, it's that even for an architectural icon, nothing can be taken for granted. This video was brought to you by Paradox. You can try Cities Skylines 2 for yourself at the link in the description. Don't forget that we're inspiring the next generation of builders through our investment into BrickBorrow, a fantastic LEGO subscription service. You can learn more and get started today over at BrickBorrow.com. And as always guys, if you enjoyed this video and you want to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, make sure you subscribe to the B1M.